Hello and welcome to the Reflecting Light Show. I am your host, April Rogers, and I am delighted that you are here because we have a great show in store for you. This is Jamie Stokes. She is the principal at Washtenaw Christian School, and she has a resume a mile long. <laughs> so much stuff to discuss. My children go to Washtenaw Christian School, mm -hmm. and I am a graduate mm -hmm. of OCS, and I was actually there whenever you and your husband came in. And so it's, it's hard for me to call you Jamie and Bobby <laughs> because you've always been Mr. and Mrs. Stokes to me. So <laughs> well, it was really hard. special to me today because I got a picture of three of my former students that is their first day of teaching at Claiborne Elementary. And yeah. they said, we wanted you to have a first day picture. Oh, and I'm I like, and they're that. going into their elementary classrooms and exciting. Yeah, yeah. It, April, it was 1990 when yes. we came to OCS. Yep. And I graduated in 1994. Mm -hmm. Our 32nd year there. I love that. Mm -hmm. I love it. And so one of the things that OCS is known for is raising kids mm -hmm. for time and eternity. We're going to talk a little bit about that as well. But first, I just want to get to know you and your story. You have a testimony. Uh, I know that I have read several of your blogs, mm -hmm. and you and I have a lot in common, mm -hmm. actually. So let's just jump right in and tell us a little bit about who Jamie Stokes is. Well, when I teach psychology to my ULM students, I always remind them that you can predict group behavior, but you can never predict individual behavior. You can look at a whole group of people and like they have this, they're low income, etc., and you can kind of compartmentalize them, but you can never put people individually. I really shouldn't be where I am statistically. Um, I was raised in a housing project in Little Rock. Um, my parents had serious substance abuse issues. I was raised by my grandmother till third grade. Yeah. And what is really amazing as a grandmother of nine, who are just the best part of my life, I believe, um, when I look at my nine grandchildren, I want to pour so much life and love into them because yes. my grandmother raised me till third grade. And I can still hear this woman praying for rain, praying for the chickens. <laughs> I can hear these wonderful yeah. things. So I know that whatever I am pouring into my grandchildren is what my grandmother poured into me as a widow on a chicken farm in yeah. southern Arkansas. So in third grade, my grandmother passed away, and I went to live with my parents. And my parents were very, very good people, but they could not handle their life issues whatsoever. Yeah. And looking at it as an adult, looking back, I can see a lot of generational issues they still were all working through. So from third grade till honestly, till I was 16, I was pretty much on my own. Rode the city bus to school, mm. never had anybody over for um, birthday parties, sleepovers. And I would tell lies at school about like how happy my home was. And I could remember that. I remember in fourth grade too, um, and it's really amazing how God has used this story. My mother um, showed up to school when I was drinking. And my fourth grade teacher realized how mortified I was. I mean, I just wanted to run away. And so my mother left school and she just hugged me. It's like, you're not your mother. You're Jamie and you are a brilliant student and you can write and you can read. And I can still hear that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Probably about 10 years ago, I had a student who in the exact same situation, a parent came to school and she had been drinking and I could see the same look in this child's eyes that was in my eyes and I'm like thank you Lord I was mortified at that point but I was able to sit a similar age child down and like hey that just happened to me one time too yeah. and we were able to really talk and work through it so fast forward till I was 16 started dating a really great guy and I was baptized Now I had been baptized at four or five and with at my grandmother's, and I never really did not have the presence of God with me. I always mm -hmm. prayed every night, I always felt her prayers, and she had poured so much life into me at the beginning. So fast forward to 16, I started studying and I was baptized. Well, my parents started studying. And I'll tell you, my parents had been in and out of rehab and mental hospitals their whole life. Never been able to kick their addictions. My mom had lost her nursing license for prescription drugs. Wow. So, Wait, you so you were studying the Word of God? Uh, yes. Yeah, okay. Completely. Yeah. <laughs> and and you. two weeks later, they were baptized. They never touched anything again. And for the first time at 16, I actually had parents. Wow. And I don't say that to mean be dramatic, but I am amazed at how many students, and we've adopted from the foster system too, kids who are in the exact same shoes I was, were extremely independent, would figure out how to do lunch money, how to... You know, I didn't ever have a mom who wrote a note home. 
Um, mm -hmm. Christmases sometimes didn't happen, and I don't and school shopping, that kind yeah. of thing. So when I had my own kids, boy, we started building a legacy, and I didn't have it to build on, but I started modeling myself around other families. Yes. So fast forward to when I'm 26, my parents were going to keep my kids while Bobby and I went um, to the dentist. And uh, I was still pregnant with Caitlin, our third child. And uh, Jared and Lindsay, they came to Searcy, which was 45 minutes away, picked up the kids. We were all going to meet and go Christmas shopping. Well, a terrible, awful wreck happened. I get the call, and I'm always thankful they don't tell you the truth uh, on the I phone agree. call. Like, you just need to come. We're evaluating. So That's I right. ended up with my oldest, Jared, um, in a body cast and a head injury. He was in traction four weeks from the ceiling and then four months in a body cast. And yes, I am the only mother who has paddled a child in a body cast, I think. Yeah. <laughs> He got a wooden spoon <laughs> several times. That kind of tickles me toward a the bit. end of it. Oh, he would roll himself off the body cat off the couch and army crawl across the room to get what he wanted, even if he'd been told no. Yeah. And then Lindsay was injured in the wreck and car seat. But um, my father, with one of the impacts, crazy Christmas shopping traffic, several impacts, etc. Uh, Dad ended up living um, four weeks. But he never really was conscious except twice. Mm -hmm. One time, too, um, he opened his eyes and looked at me, and he started uh, trying to pat my stomach. And I got the baby's fine because I realized what he wanted because yeah. I'd had Lindsay, our second child, early. So I'm sure in his mind, I'm like, baby's fine. And then he woke for a nurse. Uh, about four days before he died, he wanted to write. He was very frustrated. And he wrote me a note and said, I'm going to see my parents. And so I had that note for years and years until we had a house fire. But he, like, gave me a I love you, you know, toward yes. the end. Mother, my mom um, was decent from the wreck. They took her. They She gave him my phone number, et cetera. But she had what they call a seatbelt injury, a pinpoint in her, mm -hmm. one of her arteries. And she was drinking a Coke and just died instantly in the yes. ER. So fast forward this to this crazy year of my life, and I can absolutely tell you it's the first time in my life I felt the complete presence of God around me. Because when I look back, that wasn't Jamie doing it. I had my third child. I lived through this crazy time, which ended with us moving to Monroe, mm -hmm. Louisiana. Jared learned to walk again, ride a bike again, et cetera. And the times I went through were hard. Wouldn't want to go through them in a million years again. But one of the beauties, I think, is God's such a beautiful storyteller. It is like that giant meta-narrative word that we all have now. And it comes to my librarian's heart. My story was hard. Not mm -hmm. going to ever discount that. But it's, it made me who I'm supposed to be in the kingdom. And that's what I love to share with parents. Like, you were given this child by God himself to raise, and you have what it needs. And you know what? You're going to mess up as a parent, but even what you mess up with, God's going to use for the kingdom and for your child to grow up. Because I see so many parents, they worry so many times, like, what if I mess up? You are. Yeah, sure. You're going to mess up. <laughs> it's definitely going to happen. But he, his beautiful story that he's writing in that child's life, mm -hmm. your mess ups are part of it. And when you have willfully given this child to God and prayed over decisions, because, you know, it's like, what if I make the wrong decision? God isn't this just like hands off God. He's working through whatever's going on in your home. And I look back at all the experiences we've had. When Bob was 36, he ended up with chicken pox. A virus at attacked his left ventricle. We find out quite by accident, half his heart isn't working. And we went five years talking about transplant, don't play basketball, don't play with the kids anymore, you yeah, know. Yeah, Had a wonderful don't doctor do the come in. at the, exactly. <laughs> at the football game. So, yeah, we had to stop doing who yeah. you're rooting for, which Big Bob is known for. But pacemaker defibrillator, and here he is, 63 now, Praise still Lord. going strong. Yeah. Made it through COVID. And has Made it through COVID twice, twice. yes. So that is one of my biggest things is always in my heart. These children were created by God for a purpose in his kingdom. The jobs, where they're going, and what we pour into them as parents through our experiences. Y'all, I wanted to be a first grade teacher. Mm 
That's what I student taught in. Now I teach seniors. Yeah. God had a completely <laughs> different plan for me. Yeah. I always consider my boy self a boy mom. I have three daughters. Yeah. <laughs> so it's really strange, and I sound, say this never to sound uh, dramatic, but I don't know if much of my life has ever worked out the way I wanted it to, but it's always worked out better. That's good. That's really good. And, you know, I think about whenever you were telling that story, there you were, you are grieving the loss of your parents, but also your kids mm -hmm. are were hurt and then you had to take care of them too so you had both of those dual emotions that are going on and i just i, I just don't it was even completely know how divine you, i have no Lord doubt had whatsoever to you with his strength and one of the things that you say all the time is you pull out that scripture from psalm 90 mm -hmm. about teach me to number my days so that i may gain a heart of wisdom and i see that hashtag that you use all the time hashtag teach me to number my days mm -hmm. and i think that that is perspective that is given to someone who mm -hmm has loved and lost, but also has gained second mm -hmm. chances and third chances and, you know, has seen so seen God's hand at work. I love the term God's fingerprints. I even yeah. use that with my students all the time. Look for their fingerprints. He always leaves fingerprints on your life. I promise they're there. And, you know, I know you feel the same way. And, you know, when people are grieving, we don't know what to say. Well, I think we could all give a great lesson to people on what not to say. Sure. All things work to good for those who <laughs> love the Lord. That is the absolute truth. But it doesn't mean that doesn't event was good. That, that event, in fact, years ago, it's killed me. I had a student that was raped. And she talked to me. And they had kind of gone through the court system quietly. And her preacher had left her with, well, you know, all things work for good. And I'm like, oh, no, a rape is never yeah. good. Yeah. But what he will bring out of your life will be good. good. But I think that's always so important because I so, so many times I see us almost trying to make ourselves feel better with platitudes. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we just have to say, man, what happened to you is awful. There's just no way around sure. it. There really is. And I think that a lot of times that just gets swept under the rug, mm -hmm. especially in a church setting, and we don't know what to say. Mm -hmm. And so it's just like, oh, well, let's just go ahead and just move this out of the mm -hmm. way. But you, you sitting there with that young girl saying, no, that's not good, mm -hmm. but the Lord is going to use this eventually. I think that that will allow her to move past mm -hmm. it eventually, but there's healing. I mean, like just like with grief, just like with anything, you just have to you have to heal mm -hmm. in order to be effective for the kingdom, just like what you were saying. Now you have all this kingdom work the Lord has given there you are. exceedingly abundantly, <laughs> more than you can ask or imagine, but you had to put in the hard work to and heal. And the experiences don't go away. They don't. I mean, I'm 62 years old, and sometimes if my kids are on the road and I haven't heard from them, and they're, you know, and they're in their 30s, mm -hmm. you know, and I get a strange phone call in the middle of the night, that little panic mm -hmm. rises up again. It yeah. and so and I'm give it to the Lord, but He's still working me through it. Yeah, I, that's good for me to hear you say that because you know Addie is starting driver's ed, mm -hmm. um, and so she'll be driving in January, and that's one of the things that mm -hmm. I've had to work through personally well, because of Jeremy dying in a car mm -hmm. accident. So for me, it's a little bit. Um, different than, you know, it, I'm sure every single mm -hmm. parent gets nervous when their child starts to drive, but, but for the, for us, you know, there's a, that extra element that comes in, but I, I'm not going to live in fear. I'm going to allow the Lord to take care of her just like he has since the day that she was born. Well, I love that you just brought this up because this is something that I actually went through myself. And it has been amazing. When Jared was 15, back when 15-year-olds got the license, <laughs> I started waking up in the middle of the night, full panic attacks, complete. And I, I have a psychology degree and a counseling mm -hmm. degree. I knew yeah. why, but I couldn't get through it myself because not only my parents, I lost my brother in a wreck, drinking and driving, lost my grandfather and my uncle. Wow. So when I'm filling out the little things at the doctor's office, <laughs> um, I don't have any of these histories. It's all car wrecks, you know? Yeah. But I have full anxiety. So I went to a phenomenal counselor, Diane Phillips. Oh, I know Diane. And Diane was amazing helping me work through it. And what Diane told me is like, you have to face it. And what she did, she made me teach Jared to drive. 
She said, don't let Bobby, don't avoid it, etc. But she brought Jared in and it was wonderful. She said, your mom has been through something that a lot of people hadn't. You're always going to have to call home. Your mom is always going to be um, overreact when you're late. And, you know, he's 39, and after a long trip, sometimes he will text, hey, got here safely. Yeah. Not every time. <laughs> but she empowered me to just trust God in this. And you know what? I taught all four of my kids to drive. And my husband has the driver's ed degree. <laughs> but he, he does. He's a certified to teach a driver's ed. But he just to face it. That's good. And get in the car each time. I'm going to take that to heart and implement that into my own life. Okay, we're going to take a short break. Okay. And then when we come back, we're going to talk more about the educational side of things. Sounds good. We would like to thank today's sponsor of the Reflecting Light Show, John Ray Realty. The John Ray Realty Group is well known and well respected, not only by competitors, but also by closing attorneys, lenders, and suppliers of the real estate services in the Northeast Louisiana market. Their motto is, we tend to business. Visit JohnRayRealty.com today. Hello and welcome back to the Reflecting Light Show. We are here with Jamie Stokes of Washtenaw Christian School and we are talking about how we can number our days that mm -hmm. the Lord has given us each day that we wake up, then we have a chance to glorify mm -hmm. Him and to just give Him our very best. And I love that that is your motto. Those are the things it that is. you have taught me, that you've instilled inside of me. And um, and our families go way back. And mm -hmm. you know, we were talking about Jared, and Jared was really good friends with my brother, Jeremy. Mm -hmm. And I just remember that he, he was the one that coined that phrase, his joy remembered, mm -hmm. because Jeremy was known for so much joy. So, and I think that the Lord has knit us together with our stories, just to mm -hmm. know that you know that life goes on mm -hmm. after loss, and that just because we may have lost loved ones, it doesn't mean that our life needs to end. That the Lord has mm -hmm. good work for us to do here on this planet. So, let's talk a little bit about the good work mm -hmm. that you and Mr. Stokes, it's hard for me to it, say, to get, Bobby, it's, it's when I'm talking thing. about the school, um, that you guys really view your work up there as a ministry. Mm -hmm. You love these kids. You have seen them. You have invested in them. You've cried with them. You've rejoiced mm -hmm. with them. Um, I, I really see that year in and year out, the way that you guys love these children. You love my kids. Mm -hmm. And for that, I'm extremely grateful. Uh, but let's just talk about how, you know, education is such a big deal, but mm -hmm. how can we use that to glorify God? Well, I believe, and I think Martin Luther was one of the very first people who wrote it down in quotes. Basically, your occupation is what you give back to God. If you are a street cleaner or et cetera, you have to find your mission in whatever it is and allow God to work at different seasons for your occupation. Mm -hmm. And what I think is so interesting too, I said I started out as a first grade teacher, thought I was going to be a first grade teacher. God has me teaching seniors in high school and in college. And he uses what I call kingdom work. And that's what Big Bob calls it too, is empowering these kids. We need to take back science, math, English. Those are God-ordained subjects about His creation. Yes. They, a biblical worldview is the most important thing I think you can give your kids in education. Well, we don't shy away from evolution because it used to be back in the old days when I was in school, you could walk in a classroom and say, well, that's not what the Bible says. Well, you're pretty much laughed out of class now. But if you sit there and you raise your hands and you ask your teacher, like, so 144,000 protein structures just happened? They can't answer it. And so your kids need to know the ins and outs of evolution. They need to know the ins and outs because they are walking into a hostile world. Yes. And they need to be at the top of their fields. They need to be creators in this world. Creators as engineers, teachers, poets, writers. And they need to perfect the craft because the craft is God ordained. It really yes. is. That's right. And education, uh, higher education is designed mm -hmm. to, to kind of beat that out of, mm -hmm. of us. And um, I just remember walking into an English class and um, I had a, a Christian poem that I wanted to present mm -hmm. and I, I got laughed at. Mm -hmm. You know, that was several years ago now. I won't say how many, but <laughs> a was. lot. Um, 
I can't even imagine mm -hmm. what it's like for these kids that are walking into these colleges these days. And I was told in a graduate program that you cannot be a Christian counselor because if you are not in touch with reality, how could you help uh, your clients? Also, the same teacher <laughs> wow. told me that Christians suffer from narcissistic personality disorder because they believe they're the only ones going to heaven. Goodness. That is the kind of things our kids are fighting yeah, for. Yeah. And we have to give them the tools. Apologetics, apologetics. Mm -hmm. So many times people will use what I call bits of truth in a theory to prove a whole theory. We might talk about a fact that a white-tailed deer doesn't look the same way it did 150 years ago. Well, that doesn't prove that a species turned into species. Mm. I can tell you some even truth in creepy old Freud that I have to teach my psychology students. There is some truth, but that doesn't mean it's absolute truth. And we've got to teach our kids to pick apart subject matter. We okay. really do. And so one of the things that I appreciate about you is that you do bring that psychology mm -hmm. degree into things. Um, and also, I wanted to ask your opinion on this. So a, a lot of times people will come to me and they'll say, you know, my kids are wrestling with their faith. I don't know what's gotten mm -hmm. into them. They're, uh, they're acting like they want to leave the, mm -hmm. the faith altogether. But the studies that I've read say that that's actually really good for it your is. kids because you want them to wrestle that out. So then it's not mom and dad's faith anymore, mm -hmm. but it actually becomes their own. And you look back at the loss of Jeremy, the loss of Luke, those are the times your faith meets the, meet, the rubber meets the road. And our kids have to be prepared for that. And they have to have wrestled with if God is real. Because mm -hmm. if not, the world's going to wrestle with them. And I'm great when my kids come in, it's like, I'm an atheist. I don't think I believe anymore. Because I have plenty of students. And I don't unfriend my atheist students or students that are struggling with other issues on Facebook. I keep an open dialogue. Because mm -hmm. when something falls apart, I want them to be able to come back to me it's good. and open that. And it's been a kind of an issue on social media with me. I'm like, oh, I can't believe they just posted that. I'm like, nope, <laughs> I'm no. not going to get preachy <laughs> with them. I tell them, hey, I love you, you know, mm -hmm. and let's just keep going through it. But you have, I believe, I mean, Jacob wrestled at the river. I mean, mm -hmm. wrestling with your faith, read the Psalms. I think it is all part of our humanity. It yeah. really is. And I worry sometimes if kids don't or wrestle a little, that something in life later on is going to hit them hard. Yeah. I really do. Yeah. I, for me, it wasn't necessarily losing Jeremy, although that was really hard. Um, but one of my biggest wrestling came via infertility. Uh -huh. Three years of infertility and three years of just God saying, not mm -hmm. yet, not yet, not yet. And um, and that was really hard, and mm -hmm. I had to wrestle. Is he good? Mm -hmm. You know, is he for me? His word says that he is. And so finally, I just got down to the fact that I was to delight myself into him, mm -hmm. in him, and then he would give me the desires of my heart. But it's an if-then proposition. I had to delight. <laughs> exactly. And then the desires were given. So that was one lesson that I have never forgotten that the Lord just showed me, you know, I, April, I will give you mm -hmm. your desires, but let's delight first. Let's figure this out. And I think sometimes too, I think we have all those experiences in life where we're not going to understand them this side. I'm not sure we'll un even care to even understand them on the other side, but there are going to be things that just have to produce trust. Yeah. And because... It's just the broken world we live in. I think we've messed up our DNA since Eden. I think we've messed up our whole mental health. And certain families have certain precursors to DNA. And sure. I think we've jacked up things since Eden. I really do that we all struggle from. But I know the one thing I go back to, and look, something traumatic may happen tomorrow. Everything that passes in my life has passed through God's hands already. Yeah. And he has already equipped me for what I need. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I, I do think the wrestling is part of it. And I go back to the Psalms. I teach my kids all the time in psychology when I'm face-to-face -face at the school with them. I said, read the Psalms. You are going to find anxiety, depression. You are going That's to find really everything. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I was going to ask you, what would be your advice for a mom or a, a dad mm -hmm. who is walking through um, 
teenage kids. Right. <laughs> um, specifically, I mean, like, let's just say that somebody had two teenage daughters. <laughs> yes, exactly. You know? Um, you know, what would be some best practices that they could do with their mm -hmm. children? You have to remember they're still kids in this big body. They don't need your friendship. They need a mom. <laughs> That's good. I have a dear friend that says one thing all the time, and she cracks me up, but she's raised really strong, great Christian kids. She will tell her children, she said, the Lord put me in your way of hell, and I'm not moving. No. And it would always <laughs> crack me up when she said it. And she, her kids are like, I know, I know. That's what God gave you to me. But you will make mistakes, but you start over each day, too. And look, girls have their own set of emotions. And it's the exact same emotions that make them nurturers, that make them mothers, that mm. make them good lifetime friends. But they're jumbled up for a long time. And I think the biggest thing is they don't need your friendship. They need your mothering. They That's need good. your safe place. And I think one other thing that we as moms, and I learned the hard way because one of my three that was this way, when they give you something, they're trusting you with it, and you will fret and you will worry about it, but they will walk away from it very comforted. I gave that to you, like, I just had this horrible day. I don't have any friends, yeah. this, this, and this, and they, like, unload on you, and then you have the sleepless night. Yeah. <laughs> but actually, it's much better for them because they've given it to you. My one child that didn't talk to me probably struggled the most because how was school? Fine. Everything's fine. I have, you know. Mm -hmm. But actually, she's the one who struggled. The one who told me the bad parts first gave me something. That's it took good. me a while to learn from it. That's really good advice. I cannot believe our time is mm -hmm. coming to a close. This has gone by way too fast because you have so much knowledge and so much good information that was just downloaded. But what is one thing that is lightening your load these days? Besides queso. Oh, um, queso. I, I'm all about queso. <laughs> exactly. Um, I have... OCS is my home, and I have a tribe of women in my office and teachers who go down on their knees for me, and vice versa, mm -hmm. that I can tell them anything, and they're there for me. Mm -hmm. And I have my people, my tribe, and that is what is amazing to me, is God has put people in my life who make me laugh yeah. when I need yeah. to laugh. And uh, that and queso can yeah. get me through a lot of days. I know those people, and those <laughs> are some prayer warriors. They there. are. They are some wonderful people. Well, one of the things that I'm taking away from this conversation, I'm taking away a lot, actually, mm -hmm. but, but the main thing is just to trust Him. Mm -hmm. Just trust. And you kept saying that word, and I love that because it is. It is a, a faith walk, and it's putting one foot in front of the other, and it's just trusting and learning to wake up each day mm -hmm. and number our days so then that way Make we can... Make each day count. Yeah, we can have, have a heart to, of wisdom. Because we won't always understand. That's right. And when we try to, we tie ourselves up. That's right. Well, thank you, Jamie. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for tuning in to the Reflecting Light Show. We pray you got some hope and some light out of today's episode. And if you did, please subscribe to the show and also share with a friend who may need the light of Jesus Christ in his or her life. If you haven't gotten your copy of Made to Shine, you can do so by going to aprilrogers.com. Go out and have a great week and be the light.